We're going to talk about one of the most important hard surface modeling subjects that you ever learned about in your life. And we're going to talk about why you should not use creases to sharpen your edges when they're under the influence of a subdivision surface modifier. Yesterday, I made a video where I broke down four methods for sharpening and tightening up your edges when they're under the influence of a subdivision surface modifier. And one of the methods that I said you should not use was creasing. Now, I'm going to talk to you exactly why. I'm going to talk to you about exactly why I believe that you should not use creases. I'm going to show you how they work, and I'm going to show you why beveling is better and why creasing is fucked up when you're using it for hard surface modeling, all right? So, for example, we're going to use this default cube right here. Everybody's going to understand what's going on if we use a cube. Let's just give it a little bit of a material so you can see what's going on. Normally, if your objects are shiny, it's much easier to see bends and curves and imperfections and artifacts and stuff like that, especially if they're dark as well, okay? And let's say we're going to give this cube two levels of subdivision surface. And with W, we're going to subdivide it twice just so we have, uh, so we can see what's going on. So it's not just a ball. So we can see the effect of the subdivision surface modifier on this corner. Now, bear in mind, when you add the subdivision surface modifier, it subdivides the mesh, meaning that it turns every face into more faces, but it also curves the edges. Okay. So for example, in this case, it makes a curve on this edge right here, it, it softens this edge, and that curve is limited by this and this edge over here. So it's limited by the nearby edges to the corner over here. That's what the subdivision surface modifier does. Now, when you use a mean crease, okay, we're gonna select a sharp edge over here on the side, and with Shift G, we're gonna click on face angles to select all the similar face angles. That's gonna select all the edges with right angles. We wanna sharpen these edges. When you use a mean crease, this is what happens. You press N in edit mode, you open up this item menu, and at the bottom, you're going to find this thing called mean crease. And when you slide this, it sharpens up the edge. You can take it all the way to one. When you take it to one, it's as if the subdivision surface modifier is not there. It's there. The mesh is still subdivided. You can go to your modifier and you can activate your wireframe here, then uncheck this optimal display. The mesh is still subdivided. It's just not curved. So when you use the mean crease, you exclude an edge from the smoothing caused by the subdivision surface, all right? In other words, if you look at this from side view, before we had the mean crease here, okay, we had this nice curve over here, but as we increase the mean crease value, the inner mesh conforms to the outer shape, okay, or to the shape of the outer mesh. So the higher we take this value, the closer this shape becomes to this outer mesh, the outer shell, which has this big sharp angle over here. And as we reduce the value, it becomes nice and smooth and it's completely influenced by the curving of this, uh, caused by the subdivision surface modifier. That's what mean creasing does, all right? Now, I always tell people in my videos, if you want to make your object look nice and smooth and realistic, you always want to use bevels, all right? So you're gonna take this edge right here and with control B, you're gonna bevel it because that gives you this look right here where you have this it's it's still a curve on the corner. It's still rounded. It's still beveled, but it's much smaller. So if you have object shade smooth, it looks much more realistic because the light gathers around these edges. And this is what happens in real life. In real life, there are no completely sharp edges. But when you use mean creases, it becomes completely sharp. And if you use smooth shading, as you can see now, we talked about how smooth shading works in another video, but basically it works the same as a subdivision surface modifier, it makes it look like it shades it as if there's a curve between the nearby edges over here. So between this edge and this edge down here, and that's where it produces the smooth shading. In this case, that looks like shit. Even if you use flat shading, there's no way to make this look good. So it looks like Minecraft. It looks like Half-Life. You don't want to use mean creases for this reason. But somebody asked me in yesterday's video where I made this argument that I made to you right now, Aryan, when you're using the mean crease, why not just slightly reduce the mean crease value? So it's not one. Okay, let me make sure I select only the edges which currently have a crease. Why don't you just reduce this to slightly below one to something like, let's say, 0.9. And by the way, I don't know why, but when you use the mean crease and you get past something like 0.7 in this case, it doesn't make any difference. So 0 0.7, 0 0.71, 0 0.72, 73, all the way up until one, it's all the same shit. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. I don't like to use uh, mean creases because of this. But why not just slightly reduce the mean crease value? And that's going to give you, and would that give you the result that you want? And the answer is that it would not. Because if you look at what happens, both of these objects have two levels of subdivision surface. This one has a bevel on top here as well, which makes this smoothing caused by the subdivision surface modifier be contained within these two edges created from the bevel. But here, 
the smoothing or the rounding is still within these uh, two edges over here. It's just when we sharpen it, it becomes pointier on the side. And now we just get this type of shape right here. Keep in mind, both of these objects have two levels of subdivision surface. Now you could make this work, but you're going to need a lot more geometry. You're going to need something like three or four levels of subdivision surface. And then you're going to get closer to the shape that you have right here. And that's going to get you closer to the result that you want. Okay. So the point is that when you use the mean crease, you don't have as much control over the shape as you might think that you do. Okay. It's, it, it's not going to give you the results that you want. And if you do want to get the results that you want, you got to use double the amount of subdivision surface to get anywhere close to the result that you're trying to have here if you want to make this look the same. So if we just have two levels of subdivision surface and a mean crease value of 0.7 or whatever, check out the difference between these two objects, okay? Again, both of them have the same number of, uh, the same number of subdivisions from the subdivision surface modifier. The mean crease version looks like shit. This is why you don't want to use mean creasing when you're doing hard surface modeling. You want to bevel everything. And another thing that I always tell people about beveling if you have a more complex shape, such as, for instance, let's say this default cube right here, or this isn't the default cube, but let's say this object right here has some features on it like this, and now you've got a subdivision surface modifier and you want to sharpen all the edges with bevels, there's a, diff there's a specific way that you have to do this. You can't just select all the sharp edges because then you're going to get these corners. You have to play around with the miters over here. You can set this to arc or the outer to arc, and then you might have to connect this but it's better if you just take all the edges which are connected. So there's a little bit of strategy to how you want to bevel your edges properly. So if you guys want, we can talk about this in another video. So let me know in the comments. Anyway, let me know what you want to see next and I'll see you in the next one.